some seams to run the ball through and, and things went where well. I don't expect that type of game this year. You know, Virginia's in our way of what we want, and we have to go through and get it. The Virginia Cavaliers take the field here at Bobby Dodd Stadium for an early season showdown against Georgia Tech. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Mike Gottfried, and it's great to have you with us. At Virginia, George Welsh has produced winner after winner. He's 2-0 this year, averaging 40 points a game. In the last four years, he's done it with four start different starting quarterbacks. Tonight, sophomore Simeon Willis. Well, Mike, Simeon Willis is right here in Atlanta. He's from here, and it's tough sometimes to return home because it can be a distraction, but Georgia Tech did not recruit him. But what Virginia would like to do is dominate first down like they did last year against Georgia Tech and always be in second and short, third and short, and give this young quarterback a chance to open up the offense. Now for the first time in five years, Sean Jones is not the Georgia Tech quarterback. Bill Lewis, who was disappointed with a 5-6 and six record last year, has turned it over to a highly acclaimed sophomore, Donnie Davis. He looked good against Furman last week, but this isn't Furman. Mike, Super Prep Magazine, which is a recruiting publication, rated him in 1990 the best quarterback in the country, ahead of Heath Shuler of Tennessee and Eric Zyre of Georgia. Here you see his 1990 statistics in high school, 4,478 yards, 45 touchdowns, Mike. He just had a tremendous high school career in the run-and-shoot offense. Last week against Furman, 14 for 19 passing, 191 yards, a touchdown. But you have to remember, Mike, he's still a young and inexperienced quarterback. Now, these teams are in very similar situations, especially with their, uh, with their quarterbacks. What do you think the key is for tonight? Well, I think the key is the same as always. Who can establish the run and take the pressure off the young quarterback? Georgia Tech has come out with a surprise. They are wearing the gold jerseys for the first time since 1971. Back with a kickoff after this. Cavaliers of Virginia. As always, it's our pleasure to have Dr. Jerry Punch working the sidelines with us. And right now, we can find Jerry down in the weight room. Thank you very much, Mike, and hello, everyone. Coaches agree that to be successful on the football field, you must... ...program that was virtually an afterthought and made it a consistent winner. Bill Lewis in his second year in Atlanta, coming off a five and six transition year after tremendous success at East Carolina. Uh, Georgia Tech warmed up tonight in the blue jerseys that have become familiar here over the last few years, but they went back to the locker room and they changed to the gold jerseys. They're wearing them for the first time since November 25th, 1971. The players love it. The crowd has responded in the same way, and I know you like this as a former coach. Mike, I really do, and I think this is a statement by Bill Lewis of how important this football game is. He, he's going to the gold jersey, so this is a asterisk game on his schedule. He didn't wait until the last game of the year again. Georgia, which was the last time they wore them. This has been a very good series. Georgia Tech leads at 9, 5, and 1. Virginia has won three of the last four. Last year, UVA really pounded Georgia Tech, and they did it uh, the same way they would like to do it tonight, just controlling first down, as you mentioned earlier. They dominated first down. They were always in a second and short and third and short on offense. And their defense owned first down against Georgia Tech. They were always in long yardage situations. Kirkide will kick it off. The freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. And watch out for one of the return men. Number nine, Derek Stiegel. He's back with Lethon Flowers. Stiegel has been timed by hand 4.28 in the 40 by his head coach. This kid can fly. And he's a great story. We'll give you more on Stiegel as the game goes along. Set to go from Atlanta. A couple of undefeated ACC teams going after one another. Stiegel from the five. Almost broken. Out near the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at the McDonald's starting lineups. 
Darcy Levens, the starter among three Georgia Tech tailbacks in last week's opener, a career-high 112 yards rushing. The receivers are a question mark. Keenan Walker, the only senior. He was the Jackets' third receiver last year. Michael Cheever started nine games as a freshman. Now as a sophomore, he is an all-star candidate on a huge offensive line. And Donnie Davis, the sophomore from Burlington, North Carolina, and we have movement up front on the first play. Looked like Ryan Keel, number 99, came across from his tackle spot for the Cavaliers. But he was drawn off by the line. James Knight, our referee tonight with an ACC crew. And the penalty will make it a first and 15. Exactly the kind of situation you don't want to put a young quarterback in. Exactly. So Tech has it back at its own 29-yard line. Levin, the transfer from Notre Dame, who has had an injury flight career after about the 33. Take a look at that Cavalier defense. It begins with a set of veteran down linemen, Junior Mike Frederick, a strong pass rusher. P.J. Killian, the defensive catalyst. He's been the club's leading tackler two of his three years. The secondary, another veteran group, safety Keith Lyle, who had four interceptions last year, a preseason all-ACC choice. Second 12, three wide receivers. Cedric Zachary is in. block. What a great play by the corner, Greg McClellan. You have a kid with 4-2-8 speed, you try to isolate him somewhere, and if you can do it and give him a block, he goes 70 yards, but McClellan made sure he couldn't. Derek Stegall's the kind of player, when you go out to a practice or you watch tape, he just jumps off right away, and, and when I watched him yesterday, every time he's on the field, they're going to try to find ways to get number nine the football. He's Rec that talented. Recruited as a quarterback, third and nine. Davis with time in the pocket, throws deep sideline, intended for Walker, overthrown. McClellan was a step behind. First series is exactly what we talked about, Mike. You can't have a penalty on first down against this tough Virginia defense and put the young quarterback in a bad situation. Bender to punt. Larry Holmes deep to receive, standing at his own 24. Beautiful spiraling kick rise up to 17. And back to the 23 yard line. Good punt coverage. 48 yard punt, six yard return. The Virginia offense, Jared Washington succeeds Terry Kirby as the Cavaliers prime running back after two games, averaging four and a half yards a carry. Tyrone Davis, a big play receiver as a junior. He's already number three all time in receiving touchdowns at Virginia. Only two starters back on the offensive line, but senior Mark Dixon, an All-American candidate. with a single setback, Charles Way behind the quarterback, Simeon Willis from Atlanta. And Way will get the first carry. Barrels through a hole, cracks his way up to the 34-yard line. Look at the Georgia Tech defense, senior Richard Kimsey, the best of the down linemen. He's in his third year as a starter. Tom Johnson led Tech in sacks last year with seven and a half. He plays the strong side and an experienced set of linebackers. In the secondary, Mike Williams led the team in tackles last year at free safety. He has been moved to corner. So Way gets the first down on his first carry. He had 136 yards rushing in the opening game against Maryland, held to 24 by Navy. They go back to the eye. Washington felt it down as he got to the 37-yard line. Mike D came up to help out on the, on the tackle from the safety spot. We keep talking about first down, Mike, and last year versus Georgia Tech, four yards or more, 23 of the 30 times they had to football on first down. The first down they had tonight, they went 10 yards, this time three yards. Georgia Tech must stop that efficiency by Virginia on first down. Second and six, spot the ball up at the 37-yard line. Back 
to throw his first pass. He flicks it out the flat back to Jeffers. And he is nailed by Mike Williams. The corner came up and stuck him. Jeffers 124 yards against Navy. Both coaches have the same problem tonight with young quarterbacks. You want to settle them down. You want to give them little short throws like they just gave Simeon Willis to Patrick Jeffers just to get his feet on the ground and settle a little bit. Of course, George Welsh was a brilliant quarterback at Navy. He led the nation in passing and total offense in 1955, so you would expect him to develop good quarterback. Third and five here for his youngster. And the crowd into it. Four-man rush, plenty of time. Drops it in the flat to Way. And Way getting tackled up at the 43-yard line. He did not get the first down. Marlon Williams led the charge along with number 22, Marcus Coleman. Williams, 209 pounds as a linebacker. The couple NFL scouts here tonight they say they really like him, but they don't know where he can play. Mike, Virginia has a redshirt freshman punter, Will Price, number 10. Anytime you have a redshirt freshman or a freshman in a skill position, you really want to send him a note right off the bat in the game. I'd expect Georgia Tech to try to heat him up a little bit just to let him know that they're going to pressure him tonight hunting the football. Rice says punted well the first two games. Leaked on Flowers, waits back in his own 20 yard line. Let's see what Tech does. They have eight men on the line of scrimmage. They give it the big rush, but don't get there. End over end kick and takes a nice Virginia bounce. Can they stop it? At the one. Joe Rowe, a backup freshman defensive back, downfield to down at a putt of 56. In Atlanta, Georgia, and if you see some empty seats, it's because the Braves are playing tonight and people are not able to get to either stadium because of enormous traffic jam. Georgia Tech takes over inside its own two-yard line. Donnie Davis running the ball club. Tight formation, and they'll try to get it out of there on the ground. Super Prep Magazine rated Donnie Davis the number one quarterback prospect. And look, number two and number three there, Mike, not bad quarterback. No. So they expect a lot out of him here at Georgia Tech, but they really don't expect him to do it from inside the three-yard line. It's funny, our reaction to his statistics, over 4,000 yards of senior year passing. We said, wait a minute, is that his career or is that the last year? It was the last year. Keep it on the ground, get it out to about the four-yard line. Virginia playing tough up front. And Keel and Frederick were in on the stop. Mike, Donnie Davis' only visit was to Georgia Tech. He knew he wanted to come here. His other four schools were Notre Dame, Miami, Illinois, and the run and shoot Houston Cougars. But Atlanta in the city, the Georgia Tech coaching staff sold him on the job opportunities here. The Olympics were coming. And he just really felt like this was the place he wanted to be. On third and seven to go with a single setback, that's William Bell. Davis straight back to throw. Drops it up the flat for Anderson Rice. As he got to about the five-yard line, and the Cavaliers have really done a heck of a job on defense. The second big play for Greg McClellan coming up from the corner. Well, you just are very conservative when you have a young quarterback. You, you don't want him to make a big mistake here, so you give him a little route out in the flat here to Anthony Rice, number seven. Greg McClellan, number 11, is all over him. So it's a conservative start by Bill Lewis. Holmes waits inside the 50-yard line. And not a real good punt. He takes it at the 45. Holmes back to the 35-yard line. Great field position for the Cavaliers. A return of 11 after a punt of 38. Simeon Willis, the new quarterback, and as we told you, he's the fourth starting quarterback in four years. Look at the pass efficiency rating. That goes back to George Welsh, doesn't it? Credit to George Welsh and his offense because he allows his quarterback to be successful. And now, Mike, if your young quarterback, Simeon Willis, you get a chance to cut him loose because you're in great field position at the Georgia Tech 35. Washington and Way are the running back. Way. Hit at the line of scrimmage. 
may have gotten a yard out of it. David Hendricks came up to get him. You just have so many options when you have field position like this for your quarterback. The left side of the offensive line, Jim Reed and Mark Dixon, number 66, Jim Reed, number 74. That's the strength of this offensive team, Mike. They like to run to the left. And that's unusual, isn't it, Mike? Both teams right-handed. The one good thing it does is get your quarterback to roll to the right after the run. Second and nine. Willis with plenty of time. Can't find anybody. Now throws sideline. Great dive. Was it a catch? It was for a first down. Catch by Larry Holmes out of Washington, D.C., who sat out last year for personal reasons. George Wells said Simeon Willis is best when he can get to the perimeter in a run-pass option. You see here, he's very patient to let his receiver come open. There's the throw to Larry Holmes for the completion and to believe the first down. Boy, nice job. In college, remember, you only need one foot in. He had both. Spotted just inside the Tech 25. Scoreless first quarter. At a wide receiver spot. They'll give it to Way. Carries the first tackler with him, still on his feet down to the 20 yard line. Tough run by Charles Way, the 238 pound fullback. Let's go to Jerry Punch, Doctor. After the first offensive series, Cavalier offensive coordinator Tom O'Brien told his young quarterback, hey, you've got plenty of time. You, you're rushing your reads, you're rushing your receivers. you got to be patient. Give your receivers a chance to clear. you got plenty of time to throw the ball. Don't rush your reads, and we can move the ball offensively. Trying to settle his young quarterback down for this series, and apparently it's worked. Back upstairs. Absolutely right, Jerry. Second and five here. Single setback is way. Who has had great success early. He'll get another crack. No, nice fake by Willis. Man wide open. Goes out in the flat to his tight end Monday. He's got another first down to the 14-yard line where Marcus Coleman had to make the tackle. Not only is it tough to start your uh, third game on national TV as a young quarterback, but all his family's here tonight, and that puts extra pressure on you. It can be a distraction sometimes, and so it's very important for him to have success early in this game. Willis, four out of four, 20 yards so far. You know, when the Cavaliers get down here, they score every time this year so far. Not much this time as Cox comes up and drills Kevin Brooks. Yes. Linebackers are taught to look at the line splits. You see the line splits, they widen a little bit when you have a run play, and the linebackers are taught to look at line splits. And if you feel like they are widening out to get that angle, then shoot the gap. Jamal Cox, number 39, is able to do that with a big stop on the run. Washington, the deep man in the eye on second and ten. Richard Kimsey, the senior defensive end, who got through. Trying to disguise their defense, Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, is moving around his defensive line. Rodney Wilkerson, number 40, linebacker shot the gap. Richard Kimsey, number 91, takes a charge inside, and look at the pressure. The option never got a chance to develop. Mike, what's important here is Virginia has some very tall receivers, 6'5", 223, Tyrone Davis, and Mundy, the tight end, 6'6". Davis is to the near side, Mundy's in the slot. Willis under pressure again. Throws complete down to around the 10-yard line, far short of a first down. He got it to Pete Allen, but Jamal Cox was there for the tackle. Didn't force it, Mike. No, he waited till the receiver's open. He was under pressure. He's showing that he has settled down. Now you have to come away with three points, Virginia. Kyle Kirkide will come on to try a relatively short field goal. He's hit one out of one this year from 33 yards. They'll mark this one around the 18 for an attempt at 28. Backup quarterback Tim Sherman is the holder. Kirkide, two for two. And the punt return that put the ball deep in Georgia Tech territory set that one up. For play from Atlanta, Georgia, Mike Patrick, Mike Godfrey, Dr. Jerry Punch with you. 
Glad you could join us on a Thursday night. Expecting a crowd, uh, although it is late arriving because of tremendous traffic jams here, around 44,000. That's terrific considering the Braves are in town. Here's the scoring drive. Seven plays, 355. Stiegel and Leithon Flowers are deep to receive. Stiegel nearly broke the opening kickoff. 4 to 8, the time we quoted you early. That is world class speed. And they kick away from him this time, and Flowers from the 10. Flowers buried as he got to the 23 yard line. Hope you join us every Saturday at 11.30 in the morning Eastern for College Game Day. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview everything coming up that afternoon. Then at 12.30, the Big Ten Northwestern hosts Boston College, ranked 20. Nice cross to Bell, and Bell knocked out of bounds near the 40 yard line. Great control by the quarterback on the option. That's the question of the Virginia defense. You want to try to make them, they're so big inside, you want to make them run from sideline to sideline to try to tire them out a little bit. William Bell started in 1990, their national championship year, had 891 yards rushing. He, along with Levens and Jimmy Lincoln, will be a test for that Cavaliers rush defense because they have not seen a good rushing ball club this year. Bell spins out of one tackle, dives forward to about the 42. Mike, Mike, you're right, because in the first ball game they played against Maryland, Virginia, and Maryland's a run-and-shoot team, so they spread you out and throw the ball all over the place. Then Navy, the first 21 plays for Navy, 18 were passes, so they really haven't been challenged in the running. If they don't know how good they are or if they're any good at all in defense, they'll find out tonight. George Welsh was funny last night. He said, well, we ought to be good. We just don't know yet. Davis straight back. Good play action from the young two. Dumps it over the middle and dropped by the tight end Jeff Papashak. Wide open and Davis laid it right in his hand. Converted inside linebacker from a couple of years ago, but he should have had that one. Bill Lewis calling the same type of game plan that George Welsh on the other sidelines calling short passes for Donnie Davis. This is not the way the gold jerseys are supposed to work. You're supposed to go 80 yards for a touchdown. A little tight. I think George yep. Zach appears to me to be tight. Third and seven. Draw play. Bell. Run to run. Bell in the Virginia territory to the 45. First down. Randy Neal, the middle linebacker, and Paul London combined on the tackle, but it's a gain of 13 yards for the senior from Miami, Florida. As a defensive end, sometimes you get so conscious of running upfield and, and rushing the passer that you take yourself out of the play. Mike Fredericks, number 95, is blocked. There comes the draw right inside of him. And the big back, William Bell, gets the first down. Conservative call on third and 13, but it certainly works. Here comes the end around, Stiegel, the young man with all that speed to the 40-yard line. Here's a kid, as you pointed out, was recruited by some big-time football powers. He wanted to be a quarterback. Georgia Tech said, you come here, you'll get a chance to play quarterback, you'll compete. He did. He was third on the depth chart, walked into the coach's office and said, hey, can I learn a new position? And Bill Lewis was afraid he was going to say something else. Bill Lewis was afraid he was going to say, look, I want to play quarterback, I'm going somewhere else. Draw play, Lincoln in for the first time to the 39. He is the third tailback on this ball club, and all three of these guys could play. Take a look at this. Lincoln last week, 114 yards. Levin's a career high, 112. Bell got nine carries for 38. Fresh legs in the ball game. When you have three tailbacks, you can't ever have too many good running backs. Third and four from the Virginia 40-yard line. Davis with a short set. Throws complete. Stiegel to the 27-yard line. This kid has a chance to be a superstar. 
Mike, when you talk about that story, Bill and Lewis was in the uh, coach's locker room and they were talking. All of a sudden, Derek Stego walks in, number nine, and says, I want to talk to you, coach. And right away, he says his heart just sunk <laughs> because he says, oh, this guy's probably going to tell me he's going home. And we worked so hard to recruit him. And all of a sudden, he, he went to meet with Derek. And Derek says, I want to play. I want to be a receiver. Greatest thing he could have heard. Christmas came early for Bill Lewis. <laughs> Stego is still learning the position. Lincoln breaks it outside, but couldn't escape the grasp of Jamie Sharper, the outside linebacker, the freshman from Glen Allen, Virginia, number 33. Good mix in the offense by Georgia Tech. Little short passes, pass over the middle of the tight end delay, even though it was dropped, it sends a, a message, a little flat pass to Derek Stego. The running game, you see Danny Smith with the headset on. He's the offensive receiver coach, Bill Lewis, calling the plays. And this is something Bill Lewis acknowledged. They have to be able to run the football better than they did a year ago. If they could run the ball, they would have held on to that lead against Florida State. Davis. Trying to get some of the yardage himself, dives forward to the 28-yard line. It'll bring up third and long for them with a minute to go in the first period. Keith Lyle makes the tackle from his safety spot. This is a play-action pass where you keep everybody in, and there's only one receiver out, Keenan Walker, number 26. Donnie Davis, it's covered. He does the next best thing. He just tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Keel makes the tackle. That's a play you call. You go for the home run, one receiver. You know you're going to have it protected very well. If it's not there, you just waste the play and go to the next tenth play of the drive that started at the Tech 23. Good protection. Davis throws the bell. He's got it. Struggles to get to about the 18-yard line. About two yards shy of a first down. What do you call here, Coach? Fourth and two. Interesting call. I take the field goal. I'm going to tie it up 3-3. Three, three. I don't know what Bill Lewis is going to decide, but I take the field goal. And here comes the field goal team. And the quarter is going to run out before they can get the play off. An impressive drive for Georgia Tech. And at the end of the first period, the Virginia Cavaliers lead the Yellow Jackets 3-0. There's only one Dodge dealer in years. Scott Sisson has gone on to the pros, and Tyler Jarrett, number 20, his backup for four years, was going to be out of school. They had to talk him into coming back because a, a redshirt freshman, Chris Leone, hurt himself in spring practice. Jarrett got a scholarship after being a walk-on for four years. He's hit one of two field goals. He was showing 60-yard range in warm-ups. This would be from 35. Line drive, hooked it left. So the fifth-year senior comes up empty, and Virginia still leads 3-0. Senior place gift, you have to feel for a young man. Play for an all behind an All-American for four years, finally gets his chance. You know he wants to do so well. Missed one a week ago, but that was 52 yards, and he hit the upright on it. Brooks is the new tailback behind Willis in the eye. Nice fake by Willis, throws on the run, complete to midfield, Tyrone Davis all the way to the 36-yard line. Davis, number nine all-time in yards, number three in touchdown receptions. Great play action by Willis. Simeon Willis is going to come out with a fake here and really does a great job of hiding the football. Here's the fake, looks back. Now finds the tight end, Tyrone Davis, number 82, coming around. Good completion to the wide receiver. Big receivers. Davis, 6'5", 223. First down, Cavaliers, the 10, 36. Way. Got about three before he was gang tackled and pushed back. Way, four carries, 19 yards. Here's the way they stack up so far. Willis has been perfect. Six out of six, 81 yards. Davis, four out of six. Willis has been the beneficiary of better field position. Really has. Now you can cut them both loose a little bit. Now they should have the jitters away and uh, 
ready to play. Neither one looks nervous, I'll tell you. The coaches are. <laughs> They're always nervous. Second and seven. Willis. Got it to Larry Holmes. Short game. Jamal Cox in on his fifth tackle on that play. Jamal Cox, the linebacker, is going to read this. It takes a long time to develop, but you see him scrape outside. Now he has the back. He has receiver Larry Holmes out of the back of number 20. Cox, 6'3", 230. Had over 100 tackles last year. Third and four. Willis is at seven of seven. Great back this time, has a way in the flat. Instead goes downfield. Touchdown holds. He beat Lee Don Flowers by a step, and Willis threw it perfectly. Good solid protection for Simeon Willis. Just sits in the pocket. Look at the left side. Mark Dixon, 66. Jim Reed, 74. Good pass protection. He stands tall in the pocket. Willis has yet to miss. And Kirkheide will come on for the point after. Trying to make it 10 to nothing. Bad snap. Ball is loose. Remember, you can run this back, and it will go as no conversion. Lathan Flowers came in to pick it up. He was a young man who was burned on the touchdown play. It's 9-0 Virginia. Remember the importance of missed extra points. The 9-0 second quarter lead and a very impressive drive by the Cavaliers. They went 80 yards in a minute 46. Simeon Willis accounted for 77 of the 80 yards on that drive and for the game he is 8 out of 8 114 yards and a touchdown to Larry Holmes not a bad start his fifth touchdown pass of the season Flowers and Stiegel deep again Flowers bobbled at the 4 under pressure goes down at the 12 Nice kick coverage by the Cavaliers again. Virginia caught him in too deep coverage. Georgia Tech sitting on the hash marks. Larry Holmes is just going to break to the outside. Lethon Flowers, number four, got caught inside. Simeon Willis was able to spot it. Touchdown. Terrible field position for Georgia Tech so far. Sure is. They'll start from the 12 this time. Uh, Donnie Davis comes on. He'll have Jimmy Lincoln as his tailback. Dorsey Levins has been injured. We understand he hurt his ribs. We'll get an update on that in a little bit. So Lincoln and Bell are going to have to carry the load at least for now. Lincoln behind Bell's block. Not much there. Got out to about the 15 yard line. Check it with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, senior tailback Dorsey Levins injured his ribs last week against Furman. Now, he wore a black jacket the entire week during practice. A little bit ago, he came off in the previous series and apparently was complaining of pain in the ribs. Not from contact as much, but from twisting up front. He's talked with orthopedist Blaine Woodfin is going to hold him out for a series or two. So, a little bit of discomfort here and a little bit of concern on the Georgia Tech sideline. Back up there. All right, thank you, Jerry. An injury play career for that young man. Davis has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Mike Frederick, big number 95, timed it perfectly. I know when I talked to the Virginia coaches a year or two ago, they talked about Mike Frederick. They thought he was just as good as Chris Slade, the player who's now defensive end, who's playing for the New England Patriots. Mike Frederick, you're going to see him just get his hands up. When you get blocked, get your hands up, and you can always, you got an opportunity to deflect the football. See him get his hand up, left hand, and knock the ball down. Third and six for Davis. Draw to Lincoln. And Lincoln. 
Morgan broke a tackle and is very close to a first down. They needed to get just to the 22-yard line. It will depend on the mark, and Mike Frederick makes the stop. Mike, that's the second time in third and long that they've gone to the draw to try to protect their quarterback. They got it the first time. They, they do not want to commit the big turnover this early in the ballgame, but we talked early about three tailbacks. They need them. And Dorsey Levin's now hurt. Now they have to rely on William Bell, 36, and Jimmy Lincoln, 42. Georgia Tech would love to hang on to the football. Oh, look how close that is. They're still looking at it. Well, is that a first down or not, Coach? It is now. <laughs> and Bill Lewis needed it with 12.38 to go in the half. Jimmy Lincoln... I mean, when he sees orange and white, he starts to drool. Look at what he did against them the last time they played here. 229 yards on 31 carries. 31 carries a lot for a guy 5'9", 183. And a stadium record here. And there's been a lot of good backs playing this yes, stadium. Sir. First down by a quarter of an inch. Davis running the option. Lincoln behind him. Keeps it, a good decision, crosses the 25, knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Taken out by Percy Ellsworth, the safety. Donnie Davis is a very active quarterback. They like to get him on the perimeter also, get some good blocking on the option. Virginia does a nice job of stringing it out, but it's still good game. You pick up four or five yards. In addition to the 4,500 he threw for as a senior in college, or a senior in high school, he ran for over three. The only word is get the quarterback first to run the option. Second and five, Lincoln. Somehow he just seems to avoid all those arm tackles, runs right through him. Got up to the 30-yard line, a couple of yards shy of a first down. They need something good to happen. They need a big play. I was just thinking, Mike, I mean, they've gone, you know, run, run, short pass. Do you try the bomb anywhere in here? Yeah, I think you have to. They need to pick up this first down and then maybe open it up a little bit more for Donnie Davis. Throw the ball downfield. Steve Shankwire, the offensive coordinator, talking to Bill Lewis. I'm sure he's thinking the same thing. I'm going to open this game up a little bit. Lincoln, five carries, 11 yards, third and two. They go short for the first down, and they found Stiegel across the 40. Write this kid's name down, because you're going to hear it a lot in the next four years. When he's on the field, I mean, you just you just look to get him the football. He's that gifted. Number nine, the inside receiver. He's just running an option route. He runs against the linebacker, then breaks outside. Open. Carl Smith, number 47, makes a tackle. Donnie Davis, here's what he's seeing. Back in the drop back, he looks right to number nine, sees the option route, sees the break to the corner, and puts it right on the money. Three catches, 27 yards for Stiegel. The goal of the fullback this time, Jeff Wright. The first option in that play, he'll pick up a couple, only the fourth carry of the year for Wright. We watched Virginia on their last series run the wit naked and the wangle play to the outside. Would not be surprised Bill Lewis and Steve Shank would have come right back with the same play for Georgia Tech where they fake one way and bring Donnie Davis out the other side. Let him get on the perimeter. Let him get outside to run past them. Action. Second and seven. Ten minutes, 52 seconds to go. First half. Virginia leads 9-0. with time, throws short, what a great catch out the flat by Wright, holy cow, his momentum is taking him away from the ball and he caught it with his fingertips, our Thursday night series continues next week, it all starts at 7.40 Eastern with a weekend kickoff show, Chris Powderly, Corso and Craig James preview the weekend, and we'll be in Columbia, South Carolina for a battle between the Kentucky Wildcats and Virginia, the defensive end. Third and four. He's probably their best down line. Davis back to throw. Pressure wants the screen in his first fan pass. Throw it over the head of William Bell, who had a convoy and an easy first down. They had it. They had John Harris, the defensive end, number 98, replacing the injured Mike Frederick. It was there. Donnie Davis just overthrows the screen. You see him drop back here. Here comes a rush by John Harris. He just throws it too far. Boy, you don't see any Virginia oh, defenders out there. Georgia Tech is just not executing. Fender to punt it away. Home signals fair catch. Let's it go. Takes a Georgia Tech bounce. They got it inside the 10-yard line. 
44-yard punt by Jason Bender and no return. Army student of the game, he is Virginia linebacker Tom Burns, a nuclear engineering major and was named first team GTE Academic All-American. He's a member of the National Leadership Honor Society and a member of Virginia's prestigious Raven Society and one of a select group of students chosen to live on the prestigious lawn in Charlottesville. Quite a coincidence because uh, Mike and I were nuclear engineering majors in college. The railroad engineer major. <laughs> I wanted to be a railroad engineer. I always heard the song, a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. I always wanted to be an engineer. Railroad engineer. Turned out all right anyway. Not bad. First and ten. Cavaliers backed up at their own nine. Draw play. Brooks out to about the 12. Check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor, what do you have? See if you can guess whose parents I'm standing with right now. Alan and Eunice Willis. Of course, he's wearing the big number one. That's Simeon Willis' mom and dad from here in Atlanta. And let me ask you something here, Alan. First up, from Atlanta, did it upset Simeon or you that possibly he wasn't recruited by Georgia Tech? Not really. Not really. No. He, he's proud way yet. Yeah. He's yet yeah, to be in Virginia. Now, Mom, I'm going to ask you, you talked to him last night. What were his thoughts about coming back home to play in front of the home folks right here in Atlanta as a starting quarterback? Well, he was just happy to come and let, let the family see him play and let him let us see what he can do, which we know what he can do already. But he was just happy for all the family. I'm from a large family, and I, he was just happy for all of them to get a chance to see him come play. Let me ask you your assessment of his performance so far in the first half. What do you think, Dad? I think he's great. I think he's doing great. He's going to be great. Good up. Indeed. How about you, Mom? What do you think he's done? Just fantastic. Just fantastic. I'm looking for something wonderful to happen tonight. Hey, you think they're proud parents or what? Simeon Willis' parents watching their son play here in Atlanta. Mike? And Jerry, they're right. He has been great. Facing a third and four here, just outside the 15. Willis on the roll. Complete look like Tyrone Davis could have had it going right through his hand. Remember this series, Mike, because Georgia Tech really needed to stop them here to get good field position. Now they have to open up the offense. Good stop by Mike Cassidy in the Georgia Tech defense. That was the first incomplete pass of the game for Simeon Willis. We have 8.19 to go in the half. I'm not sure he couldn't have run for the first down yeah. there. He had some running room. Will Bryce, the punter, standing at the goal line. Lathan Flowers at his own 45. Remember, red shirt freshman kicker from Lancaster, South Carolina. Not much pressure. A low driving kick. Flowers lost his balance. There's the flag down as he got to the 42. Return of nine could have been a lot more, but the penalty flag, I think, is going to back them up further. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. You just, uh, they just kill you. So instead of having the ball at the Virginia 43, it will go back across midfield and spotted at the Georgia Tech 45-yard line. But you see, Bill Lewis, it's time now to get Donnie Davis on the corner and, and to challenge these defensive backs deep. You have to get them off you. Well, we've seen some good young quarterbacks already this year. Two of them here tonight. They have both been impressive. Davis, the only bad pass he threw was on the screen. Virginia 44-yard line. Power from Bell. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, in the previous series, junior defensive end Mike Frederick for the Cavaliers came off holding his left shoulder. Apparently what the problem was, a stinger or a burner, which is, causes numbness or stinging down the arm from a stretching of a nerve in the neck. They usually hold him out for maybe three or four plays. He now trots back on the field and resumes his position as a defensive end. Back upstairs. Boy, Jerry, that's good news for the Cavaliers. They need Frederick in there at that left defensive end spot. The front seven for Virginia, very experienced, been in the system a long time. First down, looked like a busted play. Davis being chased by Frederick. Got it out to Papashek, and Papashek will get about eight before he's taken out of bounds by Keith Lyle. 
Davis will pass, complete to Jeff Mendelsack. Mike, this is a naked play, and this is what Donnie Davis can do best. He fakes, he's going to come out, now you're going to see the tight end block down, shoot to the flat. The other tight end's going to come across on the naked play. There's the drop down now. It's just a fact of trying to get uh, away from Mike Frederick, get the ball to your tight end, and pick up good yardage. Second and two. Georgia Tech has been down here once before and missed the field goal. Bell. Hard running to the 20 yard line. 5'11, 203. He looks bigger than that. Certainly he runs harder than that. They snuck Todd Nance, a tight end, into the backfield. Number 82. He's going to lead the blocking. Donnie Davis with the handoff. Now here's the block by number 82. The tight end, Todd Nansen's lined up in the backfield. A good misdirection play that had the linebackers running the wrong way. Bell, five carries, 59 yards. Some average. And another first down for Tech. Vance is the front man in the eye. And Bell tells him to split out. Here comes the blitz. Davis hangs in there, throws man wide open. question Donnie Davis's guts. He just stood there as long as he could. But you see both backs. He's checking off to the uh, man pressure, keeping both backs inside. There's the blitz. He just reads the blitz, and then the corner route to Keenan Walker for the touchdown. Rick Lance's defense may have shown that blitz a little too early. Tyler Jarrett on for the point after. Knocks this one through. And Georgia Tech has cut the Virginia lead to two points. They are happy in Atlanta. Donnie Davis read the blitz. Now he, he goes to maximum protection. Todd Vance, number 82, will pick up the linebacker who's blitzing P.J. Killian to allow Donnie Davis to get the ball to Keenan Walker. Here's Vance again, number 82. He knows it's a blitz because Donnie Davis has made the checkoff. Locks B.J. Killian, and Donnie Davis was able to stand in the pocket. There's the scoring drive, 55 yards in under a minute. Walker got the touchdown. Davis on the game now, 8 out of 12, 70 yards and a touchdown, and it's 9-7. Holmes and Washington are deep to receive the kickoff. Mike, that was executed very well. You know, when you see the blitz coming, the young quarterback, you saw it coming, called the maximum protection. Everything worked out for him. Holmes. And the scene. Williams, the only man to beat. To the 35 yard line. A 66 yard kickoff return by junior Larry Holmes. Big night for him as a touchdown and that huge return. Speed. Speed and four speed by Larry Holmes. Did you see the kickoff return in the end zone? Watch the blocking develop. But what sets this up is he moves inside, then breaks to the outside. Mike Williams, number 27, is the only player that can catch it. So Virginia sets up shot to Georgia Tech, 35. Brooks is the tailback. Nice fake by Willis. Throws over the middle, complete his tight end Monday down to the 18-yard line. Tackled there by Mike D, the safety, a gain of 17. Monday, a huge target at 6'6", 249. Seems like he's been playing here for 100 yeah. years at Virginia. 6'6", like you say, and he just, they have big receivers and a big tight end, big targets. Psychology major out of Hampton, Virginia. He's got a basketball team full of receivers here. Yeah. And there's a tradition of football players and basketball players switching sports. Way is the single setback. And he'll get the carry. Slip to tackle. Near the 10-yard line. Ran right through Brian Baxter, the nose man. Michael Smith and Don Hickson combined on the stop. Mark Dixon, number 66. 
the left guard. A lot of people think he's a first-round draft choice. You see him get on the defensive lineman and just stays on him. Jim Reed, they like to run to the left side behind that guard and tackle. Talk to Mike Allman, the Seattle Seahawks scout. He says he likes both Reed and Dixon on the left side of that line. Second and three. And way inside the ten. They need to reach the eight for the first down. Dixon, or Don Hickson again on the stop. George Welsh, touchdown brought the fans back into the ball game. The kickoff return just negated that. Now Virginia on a drive, third down and one. Welsh trying to go 3-0 and oh to start the season. Third in the yard from the nine. Here's where you find out about your defense. Here's where you also worry a little bit about the option play with Simeon Willis. Jeffers, the wide receivers to the left side. This will be close. Kimsey made the initial contact on Brooks, but it appears he made the seven-yard line, which would be a first down. When it's one thing to know that they're going to run to the left, it's another thing to stop it. Well, when you have 6'4", 290, Mark Dixon, 6'7", 297, Jim Reed, difficult. Six and ten times, four yards and one, first down, they're only first down. First and goal from the seven, Brooks breaks a tackle, touchdown! Kevin Brooks, the sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. Jamal Cox came through but couldn't stop him. So Virginia answers in a hurry. You're going to see the fullback. Can't see him right here, but he's going to lead the block right in front of number 20. Here he is right here, number 30. Charles Way with a good block to spring Kevin Brooks. They're going to go for two, Mike. Too many missed tackles so far for Georgia Tech. And they will go for two, trying to make it a 10-point lead. Willis on the roll. Throws as he goes down. It's picked off. This could be two points. Marcus Coleman, and they're saying he was down. They are saying that Simeon Willis was down when he threw the ball. And I think that was a good call. It looked like he was nearly prone when he got rid of it. Well, Bill Lewis is down there arguing with the official, so he didn't see it that way. That's two points the other way if they don't call it. But I thought it was a good call. I think both knees were down, maybe even its belly. Watch Simeon Willis come to the outside. Here's pressure from Jamal Cox, number 39 inside. Yeah, I think his knee was down. Oh, right. yeah. Easily. Blocked out a little bit there, but I think his knee was down. Tom Johnson was the man who made the tackle on him. Of course, Bill Lewis is going to plead his case, but that looked like a pretty easy call to make. And Lewis is looking from the 45-yard line down at the goal line along the sideline. Not a very good view. Well, the worst seat in the house is the coach's seat. See his knees down right here. The ball's not even been released. Good camera work there. and uh, shows that uh, the referee made the good call. Gee, it's nice to be able to say that, isn't it? Nice. Now Georgia Tech with 4.53 on the clock. They need a big kickoff return out of Lethon Flowers or Derek Stiegel. But what they do on the kickoffs, Flowers gets a third in the field, Stiegel gets two-thirds because they want him to get the ball. But Kirk Kite has done a good job of kicking it away from Stiegel to Flowers. The Georgia Tech coaches chart the kickoffs in pregame practice and try to put Derek Stiegel where the ball will go. They want him to handle the football. I'd want him to handle it, too. Anybody that runs 4 2 8 has his move. He got a 2 -point. This one's high and short. Flowers will let it bounce, takes it at the 10. Still on his feet. Flowers fights for yardage up to the 39. Let's check in with Chris Fowler. Chris? 
All right, Mike, the scheduled press conference in Dallas is running a little bit late, but ESPN is reporting that Emma... Start has anything to do with the No, movement. not a thing. No. Loose ball. Cavaliers say they have it, and they do. Davis did not get it to his fullback on the option. Mike McCaskill with the recovery and some sloppy ball handling there. The first turnover. That's 96. Matthew McCaskill. It wasn't a read option, so Donnie Davis just came down the line of scrimmage. I think it was a handoff all the way, and he just, it, the hands were the wrong way by the running back. Jeff Wright had his, has his hands the wrong direction. He never should be able to push the ball all the way through. His hands were in the wrong direction. Big break for the Cavaliers. They start at the Tech 38. Washington back in at tailback. Here's Willis. Throws it away, and there might be a flag on that one. The only one out there was Jim Reed, the left tackle. Uh-oh. How about a lateral possibility also? I don't think they're going to get either one. Well, if that's not intentional grounding, it'll never be called. Well, see, you just praised our officials a minute ago. Yeah, that kiss of death. Number, number 39, Jamal Cox is going to come on the blitz. They're trying to get something to happen. Let's see what happens. He stops. Now he makes the hit on the quarterback. Wow, I think that's oh, intentional geez. ground. He may even be a lateral. Second and 10, and the crowd is really letting him hear it. Brooks gets to the 35. Bill Noose led the tacklers. Number 50 is a junior from Bellport, New York. Mike, a play like this sometimes will fire your team up when you feel like you're getting hosed a little bit. Here's the fake. Now here's the pressure by Jamal Cox, number 39. Now, I mean, there's no way. It's, it's, it has to be one or the other. It has to be intentional grounding or it has to be a lateral. The ball went backwards. Third and seven. And they are still fired up in the stands. Can't blame them. Willis back to throw. Under some pressure, throw. Max hit to the sideline. Patrick Shepard. Good hands and a first down Cavaliers. When you look at Patrick Jeffers here, look at the concentration that he makes this catch. Number 81. He's six foot four. Good pass protection. Simeon Willis with the throw. Look at the concentration of it. When you have a receiver 6'4, he can go up and grab that high ball. He's a sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas. Back. A couple, that's it. To the 23 yard line. Three minutes, 31 seconds to go, first half. Way, seven carries, 30 yards. A lot of weapons for this Virginia offense. A lot of weapons because they have a mobile quarterback. Remember the naked play now where he rolls to the right. That's been open twice for him where they've hit Aaron Mundy coming across the middle. Second and eight. Willis has hit 10 out of 12, 130 yards in the game. Brooks. And the Georgia Tech defense doing a better job in the last couple of series making tackles. Rodney Wilkerson, number 40, was in there. Mike Cassidy, Georgia Tech defensive coordinator, now trying to make something happen, bringing his linebackers. Here's Rodney Wilkerson, number 40, pressuring. Now if you're Virginia, you're George Welsh. you got one throw to try to get this ball in the end zone or pick up your first down, but you also think field goal. Mike Cassidy, Georgia Tech defensive coordinator. Third and seven from the 23. Pressure, trying to run away with it, and they'll get him at the 22-yard line. And Mike, I think you're right. That call may have fired up this Tech defense. Really has. They've been more aggressive. They're blitzing more. They brought Rodney Wilkerson, number 40, again. And now Virginia sets up for the field goal. With two minutes on the clock. 
Kirkide hit his first one from 28. He is two for two on the season. They'll spot this at the 29, so it's a 39-yard attempt. It would be the longest of his career, only being a redshirt freshman. Got the left foot into it and drills it through. So the Cavaliers extend their lead to 11 at 18-7. Seven with a minute 37 seconds to go in the first half of play. We're in Atlanta, and there's the scoring drive. Took 302, only went 16 yards, and Kirk Heide got a 39-yard field goal out of it. Flowers and Stiegel deep to receive Kirk Heide's kickoff. And I'd run Stiegel from sideline to sideline to get him the football. He set it up in the middle of the field right now. And they'll kick it away from him again to Flowers. Flowers bursts up across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. Coming up at halftime, we'll go back to the studio. Chris Fowler will be there with the halftime blitz. And we'll hear from Mac Brown and Bobby Bowden, who will hook it up Saturday night for what should be a great ball game, Florida State and North Carolina. And Mac Brown has really built that program. I think they have a shot because when you run the option, Florida State has so much speed where the option can negate the speed a little bit. Slow them down because you have to play assignment football against the option. A minute and a half to go. Compression. Nice play by Freddie Coger, the outside linebacker. He was being held as he came hard from the outside, made the sack anyway. Watch the pressure up the field on Simeon Willis. Never really gets a chance, Mike, to get that ball off. That's John Slocum, the sophomore right tackle, 297 pounds, who just couldn't get out there. And now it's down to fourth and 36 as they decline the penalty with four seconds left. Virginia stopped the clock with another timeout. They have one left, but that's academic right now. Oh, what do you do here? Just kill the clock. What yeah. you want now if you're George Welsh? A four-second play where the, the half's over and you can get out of here. Blew an opportunity here, Virginia did, to get a field goal. Willis under pressure. Got him again. A sack for Johnson and Coger. They both got there. So the first half ends for an up note on for Georgia Tech. The score, Virginia 18, Georgia Tech 7. Chris Fowler along with the latest in college football right after this break. Donnie Davis, they have to cut him loose. He's 9 out of 14 but for 73 yards. He looks to me like he's playing tight and very tentative. So as a coach, you've got to cut him loose. You've got to let him go in the second half. Go to Jerry Punch, Doctor. Gentlemen uh, talked with Cavalier head coach George Welsh at halftime. He was very concerned a little bit about uh, handling the blitz up front. Very, very pleased with the performance of his team in the first half. But the blitz, a big concern. So we're going to make an adjustment in our offensive line and our backs to control the blitz. And then we're going to take advantage of the blitz over the top. Back upstairs. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. Welsh will have Holmes 20 and Washington 22 deep to receive Tyler Jarrett's pickoff as we start the third quarter. take over at the 20-yard line. Simeon Willis pass chart. He's 8 out of 10 underneath. Deep ball. He's thrown three deep balls. He's 2 out of 3, 1 for a touchdown. Both quarterbacks throwing a lot of underneath routes tonight. Trying to get their feet on the ground. Coaching staffs. This young quarterback's feet on the ground. Sure is. And George Welsh couldn't have had it go any better for his game plan to get a young quarterback established. They've run the ball pretty well. Certainly in spots when they needed to. Willis changing the play at the line of scrimmage and the crowd trying to get into it. Way, the pullback. Now there's a play that really worked early in the 
game, and it isn't working anymore. Take a look at the halftime stats, the total yardage, Georgia Tech with the lead, but remember, Virginia lost 45 yards in the last three plays in the first half, so they would actually have the lead. What sticks out most is when you have a young quarterback in field position, 45 for Virginia and 27 for Georgia Tech, allows you to do more if you're Virginia. And the two turnovers. And the bench and the crowd trying to fire up their defense. They played well at the end of the half. Blitz. They pick it up. Go to Monday, the tight end. Up to the 40, or the, excuse me, the 38-yard line. Tim Johnson made the tackle. A gain of 17 to Aaron Monday. Well, Jerry Punch talked to, to George Welsh, and he said, we have to handle the blitz. Here's... Marlon Williams, number five on the blitz, just a little late, but a good read by Simeon Willis to get the ball to his tight end. Aaron Mundy, number 89, who is the hot receiver on the catch. He's made three grabs, 41 yards. There was nobody in the middle as Mundy was allowed to run three. And movement. Quarterback backed out, one of the backs moved, and the center, Brian Heath, the snap. It's the best thing as a quarterback you can do. You can handle the blitz. Talk those defensive coordinators out of run the blitz. You hit them with a hot receiver, they're a little bit less uh, anxious to try to blitz you. And the first penalty that's been accepted against Virginia, they had a holding call that was waved off. That's Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator for Virginia, makes all the play calls through George Welsh. by David Hendricks, number 15, to prevent the completion. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, the Georgia Tech locker room did not resemble a team that was down by 11 points at halftime. Very upbeat, very optimistic about their shot in the second half. Spoke with defensive coordinator Mike Cassidy, who said they have got to do a better job with the play action. We have got to control the boot. And when we blitz, we cannot give them the deep curl inside where they hurt us in the first half. Back upstairs. Well, Jerry, the blitz part has already failed. They were burned on that one, second and 15 here. Draw play. And the Georgia Tech defense looking very tough here as we start the third quarter. Jared Washington stopped by Jamal Cox, who's been in on a lot of tackles, along with Jimmy Clemens, the redshirt freshman. Excuse me, the true freshman from Marietta, Georgia. First eight minutes of the third quarter is very important for Georgia Tech to kind of get a hold of this ball game. Defense, they have to take the ball away from Virginia, and then offensively, they have to open it up. Third and 12, Cox has been in on eight tackles tonight. They'll go to the shotgun. Here comes the blitz again. Willis in trouble, throws it up for grabs, and Monday can't hold it. Billingsley there to help break it up along with Clements. Bill Lewis said his defense needed to be more aggressive this year. They weren't in the first half until right at the end, but right now they're being very aggressive. Mike, the defense has done their job. Now it's up to the offense of Georgia Tech to try to take control of this football game. Bryce to punt the Flowers. Beautiful spiraling kick. Flowers all the way to the 16. And didn't get any help. Got back to the 19-yard line. John Rowe, the freshman, makes his second tackle on special teams, the return of three after a kick of 47. Donnie Davis, you see only one ball that has been completed and thrown over 15 yards. Georgia Tech must attack down the field. And Davis has floated three or four of those passes, really not had anything on them, and one of those floaters resulted in an interception. He looks tight. I mean, he just looked tight to me in the first half. He has to loosen up. Bell is the tailback. Nice play action by Davis. Plenty of time. Deep downfield. Catching and wide open. Makes the catch at the 49-yard line. Oh, and the soul within 10 yards of Cassidy when he made the catch for 30 yards. Well, that's what they have to do. They have to throw the ball down the field, but he really didn't throw this on time. It took him a little while to find him. 
Donnie Davis with a good fake. She has had his eyes following the ball carry, but he takes too long to find the open receiver. Then makes Omar Cassidy wait on the football, number 21. That was a touchdown if he could have got it to him just a little bit sooner. And there wasn't much on that ball either. Runs the option. Davis will keep and get into Virginia territory at the 47-yard line. Check in with Jerry Punt. Jerry? You'll notice Dorsey Levens, or pardon me, that's Donnie Davis, right elbow, the throwing arm for the young quarterback. He's wearing a black rubber neoprene sleeve. Now, he's had a sore elbow all week. The reason he wears a sleeve, well, obviously, will protect him against rug burn here on the carpet, but primarily the rubber will cause him to sweat and keep the right elbow warm, hoping to soothe some of the soreness there in the passing arm. Back up there. Thank you, Jerry. Second and six. Ran over two guys again before Greg McClellan made the tackle. Bell has run hard all night. Mike, when I watched Donnie Davis practice on Tuesday and Wednesday, it looked to me like he had a tired arm. And even in a couple of drills, he didn't throw the ball. And when you practice a guy two a day, and when he's not used to throwing a lot, he takes all the repetition. You can tire out the arm. And he looks like he had a tired arm on Tuesday and Wednesday. Bell, eight carries, 79 yards. Shot. Davis with plenty of time. That was nearly picked off in the flat by Jamie Sharper, the outside linebacker number 33. And again, nothing on that pass. Donnie Davis will learn that you have to look off receivers sometime. Sets up back to pass. He's trying to get the ball out. Jamie Sharper, number 33, is in perfect position for the interception. It was intended for Stiegel, who sort of rounded that pattern off a little bit on it. It just took too long to get the football to him. Second and ten. Bell. Broke another tackle. There's a flag down at the end of the play. We'll check the marker. Randy Neal and Greg McClellan, who's offered some excellent run support from the corner, made the tackle. And Brian Brady, the big left guard, comes up limping. Brady, who had off-season shoulder surgery, now bothered by an ankle. And the hold will go against Georgia Tech. back at the Virginia 48-yard line. Remember the second and about. I was going to say, Mike, remember the screen that they had early in the ball game that was open. They may want to come back to that now. Make it second and 19 officially. Both wide receivers, now three wide receivers in the ball game. Davis back to throw. They want the screen again. Great call, goes But Virginia waiting on it this time. Mike Frederick was chasing the play down, and then Tom Burns, number 43, was out there to make the tackle. Watch a linebacker here for Virginia. He's going to read screen also. His coaches have taught him to get out right away, read the screen, now get up and make the tackle. Got by two. Tom Burns, number 43. Third and 18. Georgia Tech down by 11. Four-man rush. Davis with time, nearly picked off again. That was Randy Neal, the middle linebacker, number six, who had the best shot at it, intended for Jeff Pathashak, the tight end. When you haven't played for two years, you're a run-and-shoot quarterback. All of a sudden, you're starting against Virginia. He just looks a little bit tentative to me tonight. He, he's telegraphing his pass where he's going to throw the football to. He's looking at the receiver all the way down the field. He's just not confident at this point in the game. It looks like he's actually warming up. I mean, there's there's no gun on these things at all. Fair catch made by Holmes around the 15-yard line. A punt of 32, but good field position on the kick. Had a brilliant record here, including the 1952 National Championship team. Virginia takes over from its own 15-yard line, leading 18-7, to 10-10 to go third quarter. Tech showing blitz, and here they come. 
Georgia Tech doing everything he can trying to force Virginia into summer. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, Mike, it's finally official in Dallas. Long overdue for Cowboy fans at a press conference. Willis packed the throw. Dumps it over the middle. Complete. Patrick Jeffers out across the 25-yard line. Michael Smith will make the tackle. And it looks like a first down for the Cavaliers. Willis has looked very comfortable in the pocket running this offense. Marlon Williams is going to come on the blitz again, but Virginia does a nice job running back-wise. Jared Washington picking up the blitz to allow the throw. Jeffers now three carries for 22 yards, and Willis is at 12 out of 16. Kendall Mead, number 80, comes in for the Cavaliers as a wide receiver. They'll run the option. Washington on the toss. Flag is down, so is Washington. First man to hit him, Freddie Coger, who had the big sack in the first half, and then got a lot of help. It's interesting, Donnie Davis was really highly recruited, the number one rated quarterback. Simeon Willis was recruited by East Carolina and Virginia. Now of Atlanta. Welsh, George Welsh beat East Carolina for him, and uh, Bill Lewis was a coach at East Carolina at the time. And this penalty will go against the Cavaliers. They have made very few mistakes tonight. Holding, offense, keep the down. So they'll back them up 10 yards. You have to feel, Mike, psychologically, Georgia Tech needs something very good to happen for them. They, they need a turnover, and they need it badly. You're, you're George Welsh. You don't want to put your quarterback against Simeon Willis in that type of position on first and long. First and 18 after the penalty. Washington. Nice tackle by the nose man, Brian Baxter. Just got a piece of an ankle and prevented what could have been a 10 or a 15-yard game. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, massive junior left guard Brian Bravey was hobbling off the field in the previous offensive series for Georgia Tech. And what he did was he got an inversion injury to his right ankle. The heel of his ankle actually turned inward, and he sprained the outside of the ankle. Now, Jay shoot the trainer, trying to retake the 315-pounder to get him back in. They're going to get him up, see if he can walk, and hopefully get back in on the next offensive series. Back upstairs. And Collins Peden, Jerry, is in there for him. series we'll see if he comes back again Willis against the blitz and overthrows Tyrone Davis they tried to burn him for the bomb on that one Marcus Coleman on the coverage Simeon Willis when he takes a snap of the football here sees a little bit different defense but what's going to happen is the safety is going to back out and they're going to end up in the three deep coverage and this is what he's going to see at the snap now you see him go back into three deep coverage, and he feels like he's got a one-on-one -on -one to Tyrone Davis. Just overthrows the football. But good coverage by Mike Cassidy's defensive backfield. Davis, another one of those big receivers, 6'5", 223. Third and 12. Tech comes with a four-man rush this time. Willis, quarterback, draw. First down. Big play for the Cavaliers. Simeon Willis. For the Gain of 17. When you decide to play man coverage under, you're going to watch the linebackers. They're on the backs. The safety's going to be out there. There's going to be nobody in the middle of the football field because everybody's playing man underneath. And that makes the draw play with the quarterback, Simeon Willis, wide open for the first down. Mike gets a nice call by George Wells, something they hadn't shown them yet. Well, you'd figure that out of a quarterback, yeah, right, George? Right. That was the longest run for the Cavaliers in the ball game. Here's an end-around play to Tyrone Davis. And Davis pounds his way down to the 35-yard line. Mike Williams made the tackle. You watch this ball game. Virginia just got complete control of this football game with their offense now. The defense set them up, but their offense now is taking advantage of the getting the football with good field position. Now with a quarterback draw, then you come back with a reverse. That'll open up the running game inside. The delays. Tom O'Brien just doing a nice job with the play calls. Last two runs have gathered 40 yards for the Cavaliers. They have the Georgia Tech 35. Washington. 
maybe two on this one. Gang tackled. Baxter was one of the first guys there. And the inside linebackers, Freddie Coger and Jamal Cox. We have seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Virginia already leading Georgia Tech 18-7 and driving for more. Both teams undefeated coming into this one. Virginia 2-0. Georgia Tech 1-0. Both realized tonight would be their first real test of the season. Second and nine. Second and eight. Another blitz. Willis beats it again. Monday, the tight end. Held on to the ball despite the wicked hit of Ryan Stewart. Jamal Cox was on the blitz, but he didn't get there in time. You don't think Simeon Willis is having a good time having played high school football here in Atlanta, coming back playing against Georgia Tech? And look at the numbers. Tyrone Davis back into the wide receiver, third and two. There's the young man. Rhetoric and communication. to the 24-yard line. That should be enough for the first down. Jamal Cox again in on the stop. He has been very active from an inside linebacker spot. Been in on 10 stops, seven of them solo. Now, if you're Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, you have to think blitz now. You, you have to come after him here on the 24-yard line. Can't sit back. Time's flying away from you. Your offense is struggling a little bit, you have to make something happen. Even a field goal here would give Virginia a two-touchdown lead. Washington, gaping hole off the left side, reaches the 17-yard line. Jamal Cox and Mike D on the tackle. When you need yardage, you go to the left side. You go behind Jim Reed and Mark Dixon. You see they're blocking. Once they get on you, they're on you. Jared Washington's a type of back. George Welsh told me that can just wear you down. He's a big back that likes to run inside. And this drive has eaten over five minutes off the clock. Already taken them 78 yards. They've reached the Tech 17-yard line, second and three. Washington and Way, the split back. Way, they'll give it to the big fullback. And he's forced out of bounds near the 12-yard line. That will be another first down. Mike D, number eight, with another tackle. Jared Washington, number 22, is the lead blocker on that play for the fullback, Charles Way. Very confident Virginia team. The two wins over Maryland and Navy, they seem like they have a lot of confidence. Georgia Tech opened up with one double-A Furman. So, you know, sometimes, you know, when you have the extra game, you just build a little more confidence in your season and in your football team. Virginia's had five first downs on this drive alone. Again, they go to Washington, dives inside the 10. They'll mark it around the 8. Baxter got a piece of him on the way by, and Bill Lewis can see this one slipping away. This offense has only put seven points on the board, and right now they look like they'll fall behind by at least two touchdowns, if not more. You have to think Simeon Willis is going to have the football here, either on an option play or a rollout play, throwing the football. And when they run the option, Way is such a good inside runner, and then you've got Washington who's going to run outside, and Willis is already shown that he can run. There is the option. Willis to pitch to Washington inside the five. Did you used to coach this game? No, something? not very well. <laughs> I'll tell you that. No, you coached it beautifully. Get inside the 20-yard line, the quarterback becomes an extra threat on the option. Number 30, Charles Way gets the fake, then picks up a good block. Simeon Willis with the good pitch to Jared Washington, down to the, about the three-yard line, the four-yard, five-yard line, Mike. So they're in pretty good shape here on third down. I thought they had gotten much closer to that. They mark him out of bounds at the five. 14th play of this drive, third and three, the biggest play of the ball game. Some type of roll out to the right. 
Washington near the two-yard line, and that's where the sticks are. Well, this would be an interesting call if it's fourth and short. You could go up 21-7 to with a field goal. The way they're controlling Georgia Tech's offense, so it gives you a little bit more latitude in doing something. But I think he kicks the field goal. They'll mark it a half yard uh, short of a first down, and here comes the field goal team. This would make it 21-7. to uh, George is exercised about something. In Georgia Tech, you have to worry about being offside here. You're going to be anxious to block the kick. To worry about being offside. Kirk Heide has already hit two. The play clock is at two, and Virginia will use the timeout to stop it. Georgia Tech only has ten men on the field, Mike. Oh, if they use the timeout. We'll straighten it all out when we come back. 3.02 to go third quarter, 18-7 Virginia. Virginia leading Georgia Tech 18-7. They have consumed more than seven minutes on this drive, gained 71 yards rushing, and have fourth and about two feet at the Georgia Tech two-and-a-half yard line. They have the field goal unit on to try to go up 21-7. You thought maybe George Welsh, somebody else had called for the field goal? That's what it looked like, because he was certainly upset about something. I think the only person he listened to is his wife <laughs> to kick the field goal. <laughs> Not even the president of the university. Kirk Heide is on to try from 20. And that will give the Cavaliers a 14-point lead with 2.58 to go in the third quarter from Atlanta. The Georgia Tech with an extremely impressive drive. 82 yards, 71 yards of those 82 on the ground. That's why it took more than seven minutes. They went for the field goal on fourth down inside the five. Kirk Heide hit it from 20 yards. He's three for three tonight. And now Virginia with some breathing room. At 21-7, Kirk Heide will kick off to Flowers and Stiegel. And he's done a good job of keeping the ball away from that young man with the 4 2 8 speed. Stiegel will have a shot at this from the six. And if you don't get any blocks, the speed doesn't help much. He's out to the 22-yard line. We're at Bobby Dodd Stadium. That is Fulton County Stadium. Uh, down the road in downtown Atlanta, the Braves and the Cincinnati Reds in extra innings tonight. And here's a smooth transition to baseball. Speaking of that, be with us Sunday night at 8 o'clock for the New York Mets and the National League West leading Braves. John Miller and Joe Morgan for all the action. And the Braves are just about as hot as they can get. Last night was a tremendous example of that huge comeback for the win. Donnie Davis needs a comeback. Jerry Punch pointed out earlier that Davis has had a sore elbow, and he's wearing that uh, plastic sleeve on the elbow. But that one tells me it's not so much the elbow. It was what you pointed out earlier, that he's been tight. I think he's tight. He, he just is not confident. He's not showing any confidence. But when you lay off for two years, and then all of a sudden you get team action and firm in your first game, and you really don't have to push yourself, all of a sudden you see a good, solid defense in Virginia. Uh, it, you know, it's tough for you. His numbers aren't bad, though. 12 out of 19, 115 yards. Cassidy, the man in motion. Davis chased out of the pocket, dumps it. Levins back into the ball game. He was hurt in the first half over the 40 to about the 42. Hit there by Tom Burns, the outside linebacker. I'm sure the coaches, Bill Lewis, want to find out about Donnie Davis tonight also what he can do. Bill Lewis sure. said, he, you know, he has great numbers, but he has to prove he can do it under the lights. But, again, it's tough for a quarterback when he's laid off two years and not played in the game. And then all of a sudden, here he is against a pretty good defense. Second and three. Levin. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Pushes the pile forward a little bit. 1990, of course, Donnie Davis was the top-rated player. Not just quarterback. The first three happened to be quarterbacks. Look at the others. He's Shuler, Eric, Eric Zier. Tremendous college quarterbacks now. Donnie Davis rated ahead of them. Racked up remarkable numbers in a run-and-shoot offense. More than 4,500 yards passing his senior year alone. And a coup for Georgia Tech to get him. 
third and two. Huge play for the Jackets. They need to drive in the worst way. Davis on the option, 11. Virginia did a good job stringing it out, but they couldn't stop it. Percy Ellsworth, number 27, the safety, had a shot, and he missed the tackle. Well, it's a bonus now for Georgia Tech that they get Dorsey Levins, the Notre Dame transfer, back in the game. Started the game, then went out with an injury, and now he's back in the ball game. Out of Syracuse, New York, he transferred out of Notre Dame, said he wasn't happy, came to came to talk to a former coach at Syracuse, George O'Leary, who was coaching here at Georgia Tech, fell in love with the city, and here he is in Atlanta. And Levins was set to be the starting tailback for Notre Dame as a sophomore, but was hurt. That's been the story of his career. With the roll by Davis in trouble. Throws back against the green, and Levins dropped the ball. Again, Levins had to wait for that. And if there's one thing a receiver doesn't want to do is stand there flat-footed and wait on the football. Has to put more on the football. Dorsey Levins has to look it into his hands. But Donnie Davis really missed a deep throw here. Good play action fake. He follows the ball carrier with his head and his eyes. But he's got a deep receiver down the field. He just couldn't see him. Catchable ball. Levens just let it go. Second and ten. Three wide receivers set. Four-man rush. And Davis badly overthrows that time. Intended for Charlie Simmons, the junior out of Macon, Georgia. When you have a 14-point lead and you're playing against the 4-3 defense, here is what they're giving you. They're going to give you a two-deep coverage where they drop five people so he's seeing five under and two deep there's not a lot of holes the holes are in the middle of the football field about 15 yards to 25 yards in corner routes but the flat route is not there where he threw the football mark krishbaum number 93 for the cavaliers has put the pressure on the last two plays plenty of time for davis now pressure and he throws this one out of bounds Pressure by Dwayne Ashman, number 94. He's a freshman. Now behind 21 to 7, you become one-dimensional. So those defensive linemen like Dwayne Ashman, number 94, they just they just rip up field now, and it's it's race to get to the quarterback. Larry Holmes waiting back near the 10-yard line for the punt of Jason Bender. Returnable punt. Holmes makes the first man miss and then gallops up the field for about 21 yards. Before George Welsh came to Virginia, the Cavaliers were a weak team in a weak ACC. They had never finished higher than third, ever. And when George Welsh got here, they've won a championship. They finished second four times. Look at the wins. He, they had never been to a bowl game, and he's taken them to five. They said that it was impossible to win in Virginia. George Welsh said, hey, I won at Navy. Watch this. Cavaliers well on their way to being three and up. Brooks back in the tailback, slips a couple of tackles and runs hard near the 40-yard line. And you know what Virginia's going to try to do now, just pound away. Now you want to control the ball on the line of scrimmage. Jamal Cox, number 39, a linebacker who's had some success blitzing now, reads the counter play, and as he steps up, he just gets, the, gets blocked by number 68. Jason Augustino, and he just couldn't get rid of the block. Augustino, a backup tackle, second and one. Baxter can't make the tackle, and Brooks spins forward. And that's one of the problems Georgia Tech has had tonight. They have not wrapped people up when they had a chance to make tackles at the line of scrimmage. It will be a first down for the Cavaliers. And it's going to be the last play of the third quarter here in Atlanta. Virginia in command over Georgia Tech, 21-7. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about false starts. In this play, what is the infraction against the offensive right tackle? I'm State Farm agent Jeff Libby. 
One of the most great. 100 or uh, three yards rushing for Georgia Tech in the first half. 20 in the second half. Look at Virginia. They're up to 84. That's a little bit misleading because they lost 45 yards with two sacks and a bad snap in the last three plays of the first half. And that comes off the rushing yards. But right now, they are grinding away. Brooks. The 49-yard line. Game of about seven. What, what you have to sell your team on now, if you're Phil Lewis, is we're a turnover away from getting back in this football game. Pull the ball out on the running plays because they're going to keep the ball on the ground. We just got to strip them from the football. Second and four. They spotted at the 49. Half of the time tonight, 12 out of 24 times. Four yards or more for Virginia. It's been the story of the ball game. Dominated first down. Brooks again. This time hit squarely by Brian Baxter, the nose man. Let's go to Jerry Park. Gentlemen, they are working on senior defensive captain Richard Kimsey here on the bench. He took a knee in the right lower back over the kidney area. He's had some spasm. They're going to get it up so they can walk him around a little bit. They have put some ice on the back. Still questionable whether he'll be able to get back in. The back tightening up a little bit, showing some spasm. That is Blaine Woodfin, the orthopedist here for Georgia Tech, working with the young man, trying to get him back in the game if possible. Back up there. Boy, Jerry, they could use that 275-pound senior in there right now on third and three. Willis with time, throws complete for Georgia Tech has it, Rodney Wilkerson picks up the fumble by Larry Holmes. You said they had to have a turnover, that was a gift right there. That was a gift, but that's what Bill Lewis' staff needed. Now they are, they're huddling, huddling with their offensive team on the sidelines, telling them, now this is our shot, we've got one shot, we've got to control this football. You see number 40, Rodney Wilkinson, pick up the fumble. But this offense now, it's time for this offense to come of age. Here's another look at the fumble. Just his knee knocks it out. Rodney Wilkinson, number 40, with a recovery. For Georgia Tech, it is time to take advantage from their own 46-yard line. Bell on the draw. Virginia is really waiting on the ground game as Matt McCaskill was right there because they don't respect the passing game anymore. They don't respect the pass play. And Georgia Tech has to throw the football. Here you're going to see the handoff to William Bell. Number 96, McKeska, Matt McKeska just waiting at home for the play. This, this is make or break time for this Georgia Tech football team. Davis with time now trying to run. Slipped one tackle but couldn't get by another after the 44-yard line. Original line of scrimmage the 46, so it's third and about 12. Even though you're going to have heavy coverage, it's time to take the ball down the field. You have to challenge the corners. Deep down the outside, you have to throw the ball down the field. Third and 12. Keenan Walker, number 26, their most experienced receiver, is in. He goes to the far outside in the slot over there. The guy they'd really like to get it to, Stiegel, number nine. He comes in motion. Davis floats it up, up for grabs and intercepted. Picked off by Keith Lyle to midfield. Keith Lyle had four interceptions a year ago. That one resembled a punt. He picked it off. Great bloodlines. Gary Lyle, who played for GW and then in the pros, was his dad. Well, third down's a bad down to do it, but you still have to throw the ball down the field. And here's what you're throwing against. You're throwing against two deep coverage. The safeties are on the hash, and they're just sitting back waiting for the deep football. Keith Lyle, number 25, is just sitting back here reading the play and just gets under the high fly. That's what it was for the interception. He could have called a fair catch. Now from the 48 of the Cavaliers, Virginia goes back to work. Brooks behind way throws a great block for him. Picks up about four. As the game wears on, Virginia looks more and more impressive on both sides of the ball. Mike, when you're 290 pounds, six foot four, number 66, Mark Dixon just gets on his block and just stays with Richard Kimsey, who just came back in from an injury. Number 91. 
the left side of that line has been very powerful tonight. I'm sure George is thinking all runs in this series. I want to get the clock moving. I don't want any more fumbles. I want the ball moving on the ground. It's down to 11.37. Willis, a nice safe pass, complete to the 36-yard line to his tight end Monday. Complete. Aaron, the offense is set up. That's like a running play. Well, Aaron Mundy's wide open. That play hasn't been stopped the whole game. And, the, and a good call by George Wells to throw the football down the field. A good fake by the quarterback, Simeon Willis. He's been impressive tonight, not only throwing the football, faking, ball handling. Uh, George Wells has done a nice job coaching this young quarterback. And George said they are not minimizing the pass offense because of him. Willis 15 out of 20, 182 yards tonight. Has a man wide open in the flat, that's away. Makes the catch and David Hendricks takes him down. Be with us Saturday night. Florida State number one, and boy did they lay a number on the Clemson Tigers. They will go against number 13, North Carolina has set a school record for total offense. And if you want scoring, you got it. Two of the top five in the country. And the way Florida State played against Clemson, I know you think North Carolina can stay with them. I don't know if anybody's going to beat those guys this year. Well, Bobby Bowden has his no-huddle Kentucky Derby offense, and they're right out of the gate. And he may have the uh, the whole card this year. He's got a place kick. Virginia just grinding away. This is way the fullback. See you later. Boy, there was nobody home that time. Caught him on a blitz, Mike. Both linebackers were blitzing. There was nobody inside. It was a good play call. Charlie, Charles Wade, number 30, uh, saw the end zone and hit it. 10 carries, 70 yards for the big fullback. They can run inside. They can run outside. And they have a sophomore quarterback who can throw. Kirk Heide will come on trying to get another PAT. And Virginia has begun to dominate. They now lead Georgia Tech 28-7. Brian Heath, the center, right here, will step to the right and make a key block. There's the block on the linebacker. See you later, Charles Way. The only guy who was within five yards of him was the umpire, and he got out of the way. 28-7, Virginia. The quarterbacks are leading their teams, and here are the numbers on them. And really, I think Willis has been more impressive than the numbers would indicate there. What a homecoming for Simeon Willis. 16 to 21, 185. And he was out to prove a point tonight. Not being recruited by a lot of the major schools. Now he gets his chance. He wanted to prove a point. Second and five. Here comes the blitz. Davis throws and throws far too high for Charlie Simmons, who had inside position at the goal line. It was inside of Carl Smith, the junior corner from Richmond. Number 47. Ending on the play, number 47, Carl Smith. Those are the plays you got to hit, Mike. When they come with the blitz, you can burn them. Bill Lewis and his staff, when they look at his tape, they, they will look for Donnie Davis to show improvement in, next, in the next ball game. To learn and you have to be experienced. Three wide receivers on third and five. Pressure from the outside, Davis with a run. Sharper missed him at the five, and Donnie Davis showed you some running ability there. There's the ability that you see in practice, and sometimes you may not see in a ball game. The ability to make a decision, take off, and show the good running ability to beat Jamie Sharper to the end zone, number 33, a touchdown for Donnie Davis. And the immediate thought that I have, Jerry, is uh, Mike is, I'm talking about Jerry punch down the field, is onside kick now. With 8.39, yep. you have to take the onside kick. Jared for the point after. He's got it. Charlie Simmons did a nice job on a touchdown run, not blocking from behind and negating the score. 8.39 to go in the game, a 14-point lead. Uh, Virginia.
you yet? The onside kick here? I think you have to consider the onside kick the way you're playing. Your offense is sluggish. Your defense has not been able to stop Virginia. You kick the ball down the field. The idea is hold them and punt. You'll be back in good field position. I don't think they can hold them. I think they have to go onside kick at this point in the game. They have way, to they make something to happen, Mike. Either way, they need two touchdowns. Virginia with five men up front. Holmes and Washington are deep for the kick by Tyler Jarrett. And he'll kick it away. Washington from the eight to the 24-yard line. So they'll try to hold him here and force a punt. Our CFA Thursday night series continues next week. Starting at 7.40 p.m. Eastern, the kickoff show. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview the weekend. We'll be in Columbia, South Carolina. The Kentucky Wildcats and the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Led by softball quarterback Steve Tannehill. A couple of teams that came oh so close to big wins last week. Especially Kentucky. Nearly upset Florida. See a different Florida team against Tennessee this week. Washington and tailback. Five, seven, nine yards. And that is the problem for that tech defense. In the second half, they have not been able to make the tackles anywhere near the line of scrimmage. Well, the strategy by Georgia Tech is to hold them down here in three downs and get the football back, but their defense is really going to have to tighten up to do it. Mike Cassidy on the left. Defensive coordinator. Tom O'Brien, he's Matt Wits, the offensive coordinator for Virginia. Spotted at the 33 second and two. Washington, 46 yards on 12 yards. That's the backup fullback, Darrell Medley. And he has the first down out across the 35, near the 37 yard line. Bill Lewis very disappointed a year ago in a uh, five and six record with a ball club that was only two years removed from a national championship. But it's that first year that's so hard for a new staff. It? it really is because you go into a job and all of a sudden all the players have been recruited by the previous staff. They had success and all of a sudden you come in, you change things because you have to do it your way. And players sometimes question those things. So the first year, and maybe even a little bit of this year, it's still going to be the transition year for Bill Lewis. Way is back in and pull back. And this is Washington dragging Richard Kimsey with him. And some pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Clock winding down to 7.08. Left side of the line here, Mark Dixon and Reed right here just controlling blocks. Number 66, Mark Dixon just blocking, staying with number 50, Brian Baxter, and just controlling the line of scrimmage. When Charles Way threw a wicked lead block on the play, too. Virginia taking its sweet time down to 647. And Mike gets five yards of shot. Yeah. And that they're able to knock off running the football. Second and six. About a yard shy of another first down. Kimsey in on the tackle. Talk about the transition here. It takes a while to, to understand your football team. Bill Lewis, you get into a new job. George Welsh has been there for a long time, so he doesn't have those problems. He's, a, he's got a seasoned staff that's been with him, but on the other side, you get new coaches new players in the system. It just takes a while, Mike, to get everything together. It, it was kind of ironic when we were talking to him. He said acquisition and merger, like yeah. a big company taking over another company and the problems they have. You have the same kind of problems. The injured player for Georgia Tech is Brian Baxter, the nose man. Missed a lot of 1992 with a, uh, an ankle injury and they're working on his leg again. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? Actually, Baxter came off after the last series, guys, and he had cramps in both calves. They were massaging the calves, which is what they're doing again right now on the field. Baxter came down, and both legs just tightened up. Jay Shoup, the head trainer, along with the orthopedic surgeon out there, they have been massaging the lower calf, and now he's trying to stand and put some weight on him as he turns to walk off the field. And uh, some pretty serious tightness there in the left lower leg. They were trying to work with the lower calf, but it uh, looks like it's going to help him off the field here. A tough break for Georgia Tech. And Jerry, a warm, human night, the kind of thing uh, you've seen so often with players cramping up in the second half. 
And that defense has been on the field an awful long time. Look at this. Virginia with more than a 2-1 to one domination in time of possession. And they only need to hold it a couple of more minutes to really wrap this one up. They'll be facing a third and a yard. They can take another two and a half, three minutes off the clock if they can get another first down. Just run behind Mark Dixon and Jim Reed to pick up the yard. The left side. I'm surprised we haven't seen a run blitz on the last couple of plays, trying to get up here and make a tackle for a loss. That Charles Wade, number 30, when he broke that <laughs> long run, took him out of blitz. Yeah, that's play. true. Six men on the line of scrimmage, third and one. Option. Washington on the pitch. They came after him that time, loss of two. Mike Williams, the corner. Interesting call with the option. Mike Williams, number 27, is able to come up and make the play on Jared Washington, the pitch man. Now Virginia will let that clock run before punting the football. They'll let it run down as far as they can. Clock is running. The officials have yet to mark the ball ready for play. The play clock hasn't started. Finally, it does. Flowers is back. Bryce to kick. Will they come after him? Big rush. Almost got there. Flowers lets it go, and it takes the Georgia Tech bounce out of bounds to 25. So Georgia Tech has five minutes and 15 seconds left. They need 14 points. Couple two. They have two timeouts left, Mike, also at this point. The defense burned one early in the half. Davis, nice play fake, and had his arm hit just as he threw. And it looked like Frederick was the guy who got in there on it. The ACC used to be known as a basketball conference. Now it is both. Florida State 3-0 overall. North Carolina 3-0. NC State 2-0. Virginia and Georgia Tech. Of course, Virginia 2-0. Georgia Tech 1-0 coming into the ballgame. The way they're scoring points may be a basketball <laughs> conference. These football teams. Florida State could have won some basketball games for the points that rolled up last week in football. Davis over the middle. Rice the tight end out to the 35-yard line, maybe a little short of a first down, depending on the mark, and it is. The way so it'll be third and short. The way Virginia's playing defense, they're taking away the long throw here. They've just got two safeties sitting on the hash, just inviting the long throw. And the one time he bought into that was a uh, floater that was picked off. 4.39 to go in the game, third and a yard. Keep it on the ground. Lincoln's second effort got to the 36-yard line. They'll probably measure this one. Lincoln was hit behind the line of scrimmage and then dove forward. While Jamie Sharper, a linebacker, number 33, just threw his whole body into the hole to try to stop this play. And if the yard marker on the sideline is correct, this is going to be inches short. And obviously, Georgia Tech won't have a choice. They have to get the first down. Yard marker must have been a little off. Yeah, the bottom of the like a new yard <laughs> marker. <laughs> that one's taped up pretty good. That's that home set of yard markers. Tighten it before you go out. Got the first down at the 36. <laughs> looks like it's going to bust. <laughs> Sharper has been in on 10 tackles tonight. Time, the biggest factor against Georgia Tech, 424 to go in the game. Davis, that's tipped and intercepted. Neal, the middle linebacker at the 35-yard line. The fifth, or excuse me, the fourth turnover for Georgia Tech, three of them interceptions. Matt McCaska made the tip at the line of scrimmage. Good pressure by Matt McKeska and Mark Crispaugh, number 93, on Donnie Davis. You see the pressure coming. There's the tip by number 93, That's Mark Crispaugh, number 93, and the interception by Randy Neal. That's McKeska putting on the pressure from the outside. Neal, the beneficiary of the tip. And now Virginia can salt it away with 4.14 to go. So Davis, after a sparkling open, opening performance against Furman, has struggled tonight. 
Brooks back in a tailback, cracks through the middle down of the 24-yard line. Mike D makes the tackle from the safety spot. Talked what? about this tough conference, Mike. Yes. Virginia, Virginia, with a win here, throws themselves right into the race. And you run behind that left side. 66, Mark Dixon, Mike Allman from the Seattle Seahawks has to be going away from here happy. As he watched good blocking by Dixon and Jim Reed, number 74. And with all the money they're throwing around for offensive linemen as free agents, <laughs> you might want to be an offensive lineman right now. Yeah, but not a rookie offensive lineman. <laughs> They're not getting the huge share of the pie anymore. 3.41 to go in the ball game. Virginia just grinding it out. Once again, Kevin Brooks out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Elliot Fortune, number 99, and Rodney Wilkerson on the tackle. Frustrating, frustrating evening for Donnie Davis, but he'll be back because there's, there's not a substitute for experience. I mean, you get experience, whether even it's you make a lot of mistakes in a ball game, you'll be better next week, and I'm sure Donnie Davis will rise to that occasion. The number one player in high school football two years ago. But this young man out of Atlanta, not recruited by the major school. And we told you at the beginning of the game, they trotted out the gold jerseys, the psychological trump card, and that hasn't worked tonight. You can tackle people regardless of what color jersey you're wearing. They're just broke down to the 16th. But card game is it when you get when you trump somebody and you get trumped. Yeah. Is there a card game like that? Oh, sure. A couple of them. George Welsh went to the ground game in the second half, 163 yards. And that sets up the play-action pass. And Simeon Willis is an excellent quarterback at the play-action. Faking the football has become a lost art. And Bill Lewis will have to go back to the drawing board for his ball club. Both coaches said coming in, they weren't sure what they had because the opponents they had played early. Now both of them have a much better idea. 2.36 to go in the ball game. Virginia by 14. Lisa's great, but there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay. Virginia Tech sideline, as they have seen their comeback bid stifled. They're down by 14 with 2.36 to go in the game. Virginia has the football. Way is rushed for 73 yards. Brooks for 63. Washington for 53. You say balance to a coach, and there's nothing but smiles. Way. Knocked back this time as it got to about the 13-yard line, but it should be another first down. Well, when you win your big game, you're 2-0 in the conference. September 25th, they have Duke at home. Then Tom Lichtenberg to Ohio University team comes calling October 2nd. And then, Mike, October 16th, they get to go to Florida State and have North Carolina on, 20, on October 23 at home. And they close out NC State, Wake Forest, at Clemson, and Virginia Tech. A little good three-game grind there, but you notice the open date before Florida State. And I'm sure George Welsh will come up with some uh, wrinkles in his offense and defense to face Bobby Cowden. I'd like to have two open days before them. I'd just weeks. like to skip them. Virginia just working away on the clock. And for this man, he goes back to work tomorrow to look at his football team and he'll make the moves that he needs to move and uh, to make. He's a good football coach. He did wonders at East Carolina. He's been a longtime assistant coach. Was a head coach out of Wyoming. He knows his football. Has a good staff here, and uh, they will rebound. Second and nine, spotted at the 12. Simeon Willis, the sophomore from Atlanta, has sparkled tonight. Way, the pullback, hit by Kimsey, and brought down. Take a look at that Virginia offensive line. We talked about the left side with Reed and Dixon. Dixon at 6'4", 290, now a senior on this ball, called an All-American candidate, had his jersey retired in high school, but his basketball jersey was the one that was retired. I wouldn't want to work against him in the post. <laughs> no. No, he could, he could clean out the lane pretty well. From Jamestown, North Carolina. You have your basketball jersey retired anywhere in North Carolina. You can play. Good up front. Offensive line, defensive line. Virginia has that 
going to be a good football team. Third and seven, Brooks to about the six-yard line, a couple yards shy of a first down. Clock continues to run. Virginia has rushed for 177 yards in the second half. Got a timeout. 39 seconds to go in the ball game. Virginia has won its third game in a row. I probably save by Shangler, players of the game. For the Cavaliers, Simeon Willis, 16 out of 21, 185 yards and a touchdown. Barely had to put it up in the second half. And William Bell averaged 8.2 yards a carry. They just didn't get enough of them in this ball game. They had trouble throwing the ball to Georgia Tech. Fourth down, two yards to go. Brooks. First down. Just know that George Welsh didn't want to kick the field goal to add to the score, but you've got to run a play. You're just not going to kneel down. Well, that's one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there is no other decision. You made the right decision, but if you're on the other sideline, it doesn't feel too good. No, uh, sure. But uh, that's the only decision he had to make. But when you're on the other side, let me tell you something. It's like a piercing blow to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that's coming from someone who's had it happen many times. Point after is good and Virginia just adds to the spread. They're now up by 21. Virginia moves to the right side. Kevin Brooks just extra effort and he stretches out for the touchdown. He's wearing the Georgia Tech defense down. Hand off to Kevin Brooks. You see him come right into your living room. Stretches out, another touchdown. Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Mike Tirico coming up, and the big story of the night: Emmett Smith signs with the Dallas Cowboys. Show you Dave Winfield chasing 3,000 hits. We had a feature the other night on that. He's been hitting nothing but line drives at people for the last week and making outs. And highlights of the Reds and the Braves who are playing just down the street. Baseball tonight with Gary Miller comes up after that. An in-depth, in-depth look at all the pennant races. What I was referring to down on the goal line there is, you know, the field goal is the cheap way to get the extra points. You don't want to do that. He didn't run an option, didn't throw the ball. No, he ran Just right a straight-ahead running play, and it's like, hey, it's your responsibility to stop it. Well, he's a class guy. Both these yes, coaches are. Sure. I mean, they, they're both very well respected in the coaching field. I mean, Dave Hart hired Bill Lewis in East Carolina. He felt like it'd take a while to re return that program, and Bill Lewis did it immediately. George Welsh, the same thing in Virginia. Patrick Harkle Road will handle the kickoff duties this time. Line drive kick, and Flowers lets it go, hoping it'll go out of bounds, and it does at the two. So they'll get the ball at the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at the Georgia Tech schedule. Now you have to bounce back. You've got to go to Death Valley, Clemson, Florida State, back-to-back. -back. Now there's a two tough place to play. Oh. You get Maryland at home. Close out with at Duke, Baylor at home, at Wake Forest, and traditional rival. And the sixth most difficult schedule in the nation. Might be a long road this year for Bill Lewis. Got a lot of young kids, especially that kid, uh, sophomore quarterback. And they have had the ball only 8 minutes and 46 seconds in the second half. It's been dominated by the Cavaliers. Everybody out in the path for Davis. Near sideline, complete got it out there to Cassidy. He got out of bounds with 25 seconds to go. And happy homecoming for Simeon Willis, who was a local star here in high school football. Mike uh, pointed out earlier his recruitment, the fact that East Carolina was after him. He eventually chose uh, Virginia, but not recruited by a lot of the other big schools. And this is his way of showing that. You know, he, 
But George Welsh, you have to credit him and Tom O'Brien because what they have accomplished with four different quarterbacks starting in the last four years, it's amazing. You just plug them in and let them go. Davis trying to scramble this time, and he'll get out of bounds at the Cavalier 40-yard line, chased up by Tom Burns. Donnie Davis. I think Virginia, off of what they have shown tonight, has a chance at a heck of a season. Well, when you have down linemen like they do, Mike Frederick on defense, you've got Dixon and Reed leading you in the offensive line, uh, you, and now you've developed a young quarterback, two strong running backs, uh, Brooks and Washington, with a good solid fullback, and then you got a big tight end like Aaron Mundy and wide receivers on the outside. This is a team that could contend. Now, when you say contend, contending with Florida State, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Davis trying to make something happen, and Papashak can't get to that one with nine seconds to go in the ballgame. Davis, he passed his complete, intended for number 89. Tough Davis night for the much-heralded sophomores, now 16 out of 32. The three big interceptions. Never really felt at home at quarterback no. tonight when you watched him. He just... No rhythm. You're right. No rhythm in the in the game for him. He never really got his confidence built up. Uh, couldn't they couldn't really establish the running game to what they needed to, and the three interceptions uh, really hurt Georgia Tech. He's hit only seven out of 18 in this half, and if the young man has been bothered by a sore elbow, we certainly hope he works out of that because he has the credentials to play at a big time level. Davis on a roll deep down the middle. He's got it complete. Keenan Walker as time runs out. George Welsh leads his Cavaliers to a 3-0 record. Our final score, Virginia 35, Georgia Tech 14. For Mike Godfrey, Dr. Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Atlanta, Georgia. Sports Center is next.